All right, Shalom. I want to start off by giving our praise, honor, and glory. I'd like to give double honors unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who I learned this truth from. And I'd like to say peace and salutations unto the hopefully elect. And today, you know, I just pretty much want to speak on, you know, the recent news that came out, you know, about the draft, man, you know. Because the House of Representatives, you know, they passed a bill to, you know, pretty much draft anyone between the ages of 18 and 26 years old, you know. So anyone between the age range, you know, will automatically be, you know, enter into that draft, which, you know, they'll probably increase that age limit. But, you know, they're just what they set it to now. So, you know, I have a couple clips, you know, that I want to play. You know, then I'm going to bring out a few scriptures. Lord willing, this lesson is at a final straight to the point, man. And I'm going to entitle this lesson, Wartime, because that's what time it is, man. That's what time it is, and that's the time that we're in. So get ready. The House just passed a bill that they're going to automatically register men from 18 to 26 for war, okay? And all I want to say is to America, good luck with that. These new little TikTokers, baby. These motherfuckers ain't gonna fight no war. We're gonna die. You're gonna die. You might as well just keep money, uh, investing money in your yeah, guns. Because these, these new kids, you wanna send these new kids to fight these wars? The TikTok hip shakers? Out of your mind. This is a new America, baby. This ain't the 19 months. Now, like, seriously, you're going to draft these kids that be tic tacking all day to fight them, what? Most likely, what, them Russians? Them motherfuckers fighting bears and shit? And mother climbing mountains to go to school and whatever? I got some news for your mother. Now, as dumb as this bitch Cardi B is, she made... You know, a couple points. She said one. First, she said we, and then she said y'all. No, you gonna die too. You are going to die too, right? And then another point she made is that you know she she has a right. You know, she knows that the American military is gonna be put up against Russia. You know, and she said it, man. Those Russians are built different. The, the Russians literally wrestle bears for fun. You know, but yet you women say you know you feel safer with. You know, a bear in the woods. Right. Okay. But, you know, as dumb as this woman is, she made sense. Like, you know, America is doomed. She knows this. Because look at who they're going to send over there, man. You know, because a lot of these people, especially nowadays, these men, they're soft. They're weak. They're effeminate, man. You know. So these, these, these people ain't ready for war, man. Y'all ain't ready. Especially you super tough niggas, man. Just real quick, it's niggas like this that's gonna get shit to go for. No, I gotta get close, I cannot miss. I got go run, I gotta. No, I gotta get close, I cannot miss. I got go run, I gotta. So all you gang banging niggas, you street niggas, all you wanna be killer, man. That's that's gonna be all time to shine, baby. It's gonna be all time to shine. You know, y'all waving all these guns in the camera and shit. Just remember, y'all gonna get to do all that. Y'all gonna get to slide on the apps, you know, which y'all ops is gonna be them Russians. You know, y'all biggest ops. Shit, don't forget, Ishmael too, them Arabs, the Chinese, the Koreans. These are all the nations that y'all gonna have to go up against, man. You know, ain't no game out here. But you niggas really think y'all ready for this, right? Wrong. Let's check this one out. I need ages 18 to 24. Get your hush puppy head asses on a motherfucking puss. The draft is real. We is not bullshitting. You ain't got to sign up with us, but you're going to pick some motherfucking body and fuck no, you ain't going to the Space Force. Because nobody knows what the fuck they do. They don't even know what the fuck they do. You're going to get some regular shit. Marines, Army, Navy, Air Force. Y'all probably ain't, I ain't even get that. But yeah, y'all, uh-huh. Y'all gonna grab the hell out of that info and grab that cheap-ass vest and that brown bag that look like he covered up a 40 can. Grab that motherfucking MRE and get your cheap ass on that motherfucking plane. Boy, I can't wait. I can't wait to see y'all in tears in shambles. I could never go to the military. 
we gonna see. <laughs> Retention rate was low. Government, I'll fix that. <laughs> I'll fix your ass, but I can't wait, bro. Baby, motherfucker, I'm on the way up. I'm almost out the door. This don't really mean nothing at all, but it do mean I was in the army at least two and a half years, which means I'm done. Ah! Which mean I'm done. Ah! Fuck is you talking about? Wrong, Officer Jones. You ain't done, nigga. If it's a draft, you gonna take your ass out there to fight too. So you also are gonna be in tears, nigga. The fuck is you talking about? You're already in the military, so that means, nigga, you already getting sent over there to go fight, you dumbass. Fuck is wrong with Jake, man. This is this the problem. Niggas don't take nothing serious until shit get real. But it's okay, because you're going to be one of those people crying because you know you're going to fucking die over there, right? Because, again, these are the type of niggas that you're going to be fighting side to side. Yo, with. the fuck going on with y'all niggas? Bro? Hey, look, bro, I finally get to go live, bro. Hey, look. Y'all, this shit is not that bad, bro. Man, man, what the fuck going on, man, man? Hey, man, man, bro, you need to come to this bitch, gang. This bitch lit in this motherfucker. Gen Z taking over, nigga. You know we crashing out. And gang, guess what, nigga? You get to catch free bodies in this bitch. You can't beat that, gang. You know what we doing. Hey, and I think they got that Zion in this motherfucker, boy. I didn't talk to the first Sarge earlier, and he said they got a gas chain, but I can't wait to see about that motherfucker, boy. I'm about to be high as fuck. Gang, that's not even the best part. They gave you a bag, too. And he got shit in the gang. You get a ski. Okay. Some slides in that motherfucker got there. You got a drum in that motherfucker. <laughs> Hold on, gang. Hold on, gang. And you got that motherfucker. It's T Lock in that motherfucker, gang. You better pull the fuck up. I know y'all boys don't know what the fuck this is, boy. Then the fuck up and gave me a goddamn arm in this bitch, bro. That C4 motherfucker. Watch this. Look at that. I pulled this bitch. Watch this. Throw that bitch. Nah, again, you clearly see this dude is joking. But at the same time, it's gonna be like that for real. Because there's a lot of niggas out there, y'all laughing. Like, this is a joke. This ain't no goddamn joke, man. This thing real. But a lot of you niggas, reality ain't gonna hit y'all until y'all on that battlefield. And as soon as your foot hit that dirt, and that bullet split your motherfucking head, man, y'all gonna realize once y'all hit the spirit world, oh shit, this is real. Nah, no, nigga. But it's okay, man. It's okay. Because a lot of y'all, y'all, man, y'all in for a rude awakening. This is why the warning is going out. The minute the Lord out here telling y'all, man, what's finna happen? We've been saying this, you know? You know, from the apostles of GMS on down, we've been telling you that a war, a, a third world war is going to happen, man. And it's real. Like, this is in no way, shape, or form a joke, you know? Because a lot of you niggas that really think y'all ready for this war, y'all ain't, man. And then again, going back to the dude, Jones, you know, he talk about, oh, I'm done. You're going to take that and you're going to, you know, yeah, you're going to get the pick where you're going to go. You know, no matter what branch of the military you in, your ass is going to fight. And in my personal opinion, if you're a part of the Air Force or the space program, you fucked. You're through. Because if you're a part of that branch of the military, just know, just know you're going to have to fight against you know, our Lord Yahweh shine the angels. You know, that's that's going to be your opponent. And it's, it's over. Yeah, it's over. Flawless victory, man. Flawless. You niggas getting it's over with, man. But I don't even want to, you know, ramble too long. Because, again, I've been seeing certain videos that brothers have been sharing, man. Because this, this is real. This is going to happen. You know, biblical prophecy is unfolding more and more by the day. And again, you have, you know, of course, these Babylonians, these Americans, you know, they're oblivious to what's going on. But, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, it's like you, you know, you, you Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos and the Native Americans, you know, here in America, you know, you're still oblivious to the fact that, you know, the time that we're living in is very crucial, you know, because one thing our people do a lot is party and bullshit. Well, fun time been over with, man. Playtime has been over with. This is the realest. This shit is finna get, you know. 
And please don't think just because if you don't get drafted, this war still ain't going to come to you. Please don't think you're going to escape because it ain't going to be no escape, man. So let me get right into it, man. Because, you know, just I'm I'm eagerly waiting because from what he said, you know, I'm I'm eagerly waiting to see a lot of you, you niggas, you tough niggas out there. You know, that got all these guns that claim y'all killers and all of this shit. It's going to be all time. And don't cry. Go ahead, take that gear, and take your ass on over there to die, because you ain't coming back home. So, I'm going to start in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 1. And as you can see, the headline reads, A time for everything, and it, indeed, it is a time for everything, man. It is a time and a purpose for everything on earth. So, this is Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, and verse 1. It says, To everything there is a season. And a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to em refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to reign and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. This is the point, verse 8. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace, man. So that's the time that we're in, man. We're in a time to kill. We're in a time to weep. We're in a time to mourn. We're in a time to speak. We're in a time of hate, man. And especially we are in a time of war because that's all you're hearing about is wars and rumors of wars, man, which I'm going to grab that next. You know, the book of Matthew chapter 24 and verse 6 because that's the time that we're in, man. These are all the signs that the Lord gave us, you know, that he was on his way back. You know, so this is Matthew chapter 24 and verse 6. It says, Ye shall have wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And yeah, man, all these things must indeed come to pass, man. You know, because again, that's the title we're in. We're in a time of war. It's war time. And a lot of you niggas just don't understand. Y'all going to be a part of this war, man. You know, and that's who this message is geared towards, you niggas, you know, not the brothers, you niggas, man. You Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans that refuse to repent and turn from your wicked ways, y'all going to be a part of this war, man. You're going to die horribly. But you won't believe it until it actually happens, but it's okay, man. The Lord going to get y'all together. So I'm going to go to the book of Jeremiah. Chapter 51, because again, man, this this is going to be, you know, a very, very serious war that's going to take place, man. This is going to be the war to end all wars, man. You know, so I'm going to kind of jump around this chapter, but I'm going to grab Jeremiah 51 and 30 first to prove, you know, what these guys are saying, man. What Cardi B, Retardy B, and you know, that, that one guy said, man. This is Jeremiah 51 and 30. It says, The mighty men of Babylon have forborne to fight. They remain in their holds. Their might have filled them. They became as women. They have burned her dwelling places. Her bars are broken. Yeah, man, indeed. So I'm going to read that in the NLT as well, man. Because again, this, 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 this is real. And this is describing, you know, not only, you know, the men that are already in the military this is talking about, you know, the American men today, man. This is Jeremiah 51 and 30 in the NLT. It says, her mightiest warriors no longer fight. They stay in their barracks, their courage gone. They have became like women. The invaders have burned the houses and broken down the city gates. And yeah, man, these men... You know, have become like women. You know, 
mentally and physically, you know, because you have men out there that are getting, you know, you know, transformation surgeries done, you know, becoming transformers, you know, men are literally becoming women, but, you know, they've become weak. As we know, women are the weaker vessel, you know, and women, you know, they don't do well, you know, under pressure and women are not meant to fight wars, man, you know. But that's how these men are nowadays, man. They're weak. They're effeminate. They're in no way, shape, or form ready to fight a war, you know. And this prophecy is speaking more and more about a day, you know, that verse. Because all these men, shh, these men nowadays are through, man. They're not men. Shh. It's crazy. So I'm going to get... Jeremiah 51 and verse 8, it says, Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her? Take balm for her pain. If so be, she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go every one into his own country. For her judgment reaches unto heaven and is lifted up even to the sky. So yeah, man, this, this, this place is falling, man. It's through. And, you know, them having these low draft numbers and or recruitment numbers is the reason why they have to do this draft. Which me, speaking as a man, I feel like they're going to do the same thing they're doing, in, you know, in the Ukraine. They're going to, you know, reset the age from 18 to 65, you know, for this draft, you know, because they, they're going to need, you know, military age men, men that are still able to fight to go and fight in this war, man. But they don't understand. Once they go over there, that's, that's it. They're going to be slaughtered. Because, again, just like, you know, the... the <sighs> that retarded woman said, you know, they're going to they're gonna be going up against the Russians, and they are. And that's your... That's the main opponent. That's America's main opponent. Russia, the bear... You know, so I'm going to get Ezekiel chapter 38, start of verse one. And it says, and the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And the it's like it and prophesy against him and say, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, behold, I am against thee, O Gog the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and the chief prince, you know, the Hebrew word for the word chief prince is Ra'ash Shar, which Russia is a Hebrew word, man, you know, because this is who it's referring to, you know, Gog, you know, and Magog, which Gog just means, or Magog means from God, Gog from Gog, you know. So this is who this is talking about, Russia, Verse 4, and it says, And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth, and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. And yeah, man, the Lord is putting that old USSR spirit back on Russia. It's the reason why, you know, you have Vladimir Putin, you know, meeting with, you know, these other you know, world leaders, you know, recently he just, you know, met with, you know, Kim Jong-un, you know, I seen the video I first do have, no, I closed it, you know, but you have Vladimir Putin that just met with, you know, Kim Jong-un, man, you know, and as, as you know, or should know, Kim Jong-un is, he hates America, man, hence his, you know, his nickname, Rocket Man, because he's ready to push the button. You know, he's ready to destroy this place. Here's the reason why he's constantly, you know, parading his nuclear weaponry, you know, up and down the street in Korea. You know, <clears throat> verse five, it says Persia, Ethiopia and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all his bands, the house of Togoma of the north quarters and all his bands, many people with thee. And many people with thee, be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that assemble them unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. <coughs> Excuse me, Slakia. Yeah, man. Those are just a couple of the 
you know, nations named there. Russia is going to be a guard until, you know, Persia, you know, Elam, you know, Ethiopia, Libya, you know, and even all of those, you know, UAE, you know, the United Arab Emirates, you know, all those Middle Eastern countries that are allies with Russia, you know, Russia is going to be a guard unto them, man. You know, because again, a lot of you forget, man. Y'all going to be going up against Ishmael as well. Y'all forget the nature of this man, right? So let's get that right quick. In the book of Genesis, chapter 16, and verse 11. And it says, And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shall bear a son, and thou shalt call his name Ishmael, which in the Hebrew is Yashamai Allah, says, Because the Lord hath heard thy affliction, which, you know, that's what his name means in the Hebrew affliction heard, you know. Verse 12, and he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man and every hand and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. And yeah, man, Ishmael is a wild man. It's the reason why you have, you know, suicide bombers. That's that's something that Ishmael does, man. These other nations don't do that, you know. Ishmael is a wild man, and that's just one of the many things he does, you know, but, you know, not only the Russians, but these Arabs, you know, the Chinese, the Koreans, you know, that, well, yeah, the, the Iranians, you know, they're Ishmael as well, but, you know, again, these are the nations that you Babylonians are going to have to fight against in this war, man, you're not going to make it, you're going to be destroyed, man, so all the people that think, oh, well, why well, ain't going... You know, I ain't going to be drafted. Well, don't worry. If somehow you manage to escape being drafted, just remember this war is going to be brought to you. You know? So coming back to the book of Ezekiel 38, I'm going to go to verse 10. And it says, Thus said the Lord Yahweh, It shall also come to pass that at that same time shall things come into thy mind, and thou shalt think an evil thought. And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages, I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely, all of them without walls and having neither bars nor gates, to take a spoil and to take a prey, and to turn thine hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited. And now, Slucky, and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations, which have gotten cattle and goods, that dwell in the midst of the land. Yeah, man, don't worry. If you don't get drafted, now, to go over to the Middle East and fight, just know that this war is going to be brought to you, you know, because that's that evil thought, man, that Russia and these other nations are going to invade America, you know, and they're going to terrorize you, Babylonians, man. They're going to terrorize you. You're not going to make it. There is no escape from this, man, you know, and you know how also you're not going to escape because remember, this is not going to be a traditional war. Yes, you're going to have ground troops, you know, over there in the Middle East. But this war is ultimately going to be fought with nuclear missiles, man. So this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 5. And it says, For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. And yeah, man. So don't worry. For those of you that don't, you know, get sent over there to fight, you know, there's still going to be a war going on over here in America, man. And Jacob's trouble is going to be going on. Civil rest, you know, civil unrest, you know, is going to be going on. People are, you know, you you Babylonians are going to be at war with each other, you know, because there's going to be a lack of bread, you know, in the time to come. <clears throat> you know, people are going to be hungry. So, you know, there, it's, it's going to be bad out here, man. It's going to be extremely bad. So I'm going to get that I'm going to jump to the book of 2nd Edges, chapter 15, and I'm going to start at verse 14. And it says, Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draweth nigh. And one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men, and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. 
For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. So, yes, man, there isn't going to be an escape, you know, from this. So while, you know, the American army is over in the Middle East getting their ass handed to them, you know, by the Russians, the Koreans and the Chinese and Ishmael, you know. Here in America, you know, you Babylonians are going to be fighting each other, man. You're going to be killing each other. You know, people that have food, you know, stored up, you know, these doomsday preppers, man. A lot of them are going to die, you know, because the people out here that are, you know, aren't, you know, ready. Well, really, you know, there is no really prepping for this thing, man. But people that are, you know, hoarding up goods and all of that, man, you know, people are going to look to take you know, other people's goods, take whatever food or water they have stored up, you know, so that they can live. But that's what's going to happen, man. A lot of people are going to kill each other, you know, as it says, for lack of bread, because there is going to be a famine. There is, it's not going to be any food, you know, there's going to be a lack of it, man. There's not going to be a lot, you know, readily available the way it is now, you know. <clears throat> so I'm going to jump to Second Andrews chapter 16. I'm going to start at verse 33. And just remember, you know, women will be drafted too, you know. So a lot of women will be sent over there to fight as well. But as I've stated, you know, many times, you women that are left over here in America, obviously, you know, not the sisters, but you you women, you know, that are left here in America, you're going to be left defenseless, you know. And the scripture proves that. This is Second Edges chapter 16 and verse 33. Says the virgin shall mourn having no bridegrooms, the women shall mourn having no husbands, their daughters shall mourn having no helpers, and the wars shall their bridegrooms be destroyed, and their husbands shall perish of famine. And yeah, man, I just told you in verse 34, you know, all these women out here that have, you know, husbands, you know, boyfriends, whatever, all these women out here that have men, you know, their 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 husbands are going to die. You know, in the wars, as it says, they're going to die over there. And then whatever men don't get drafted to the war, they're going to die of the famine or however else, you know, the Lord sees fit to take them out. You know, this is how serious this time that we're living in is, man. This is extremely serious. But, you know, you, you, you Americans, man, you don't take anything serious. It's the reason why a lot of you are going to be caught off guard, you know. So I'm going to end it on this. This is the book of Joel, chapter 3, and verse 9. It says, Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about thither, because thy mighty ones... It's like you caused thy mighty ones to come down. O Lord, says, let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, which in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shapat, which means, you know, Yahweh's judgment. For there I will sit to judge all the heathen round about. And yeah, man, that's where this war is going to take place. You know, the valley of Jehoshaphat, you know, over there in the region of Saudi Arabia, you know, where the Lord is going to destroy all these armies, man. You know, and you American men and women that will be drafted for this war, you are not coming home. You are going to die, you know. So keep taking, you know, this draft as if it's a joke if you want to until your foot hit them soils, man. So, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Tiahawah, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Rakakwadash. I'd like to give double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, where I learned this truth from. And I'd like to say peace and salutations unto the hopefully elect. To the next time I say shalom.